Alright guys, welcome to the third and final installment in this series, where I've been covering Insomniac's games based on Spider-Man, and today I'll be covering Marvel Spider-Man 2. If you've not watched the previous videos covering the simply titled Marvel Spider-Man and its sequel Marvel Spider-Man Miles Morales, and you'd like to, the links will be in the bio below. Going back to this game, it was released in 2023 and is an action adventure, which was developed by Insomniac and published by Sony. It's based on the comic and other media adaptations of the Marvel comic book characters, Peter Parker and Miles Morales. Anyways, let's begin with looking into the gameplay. Miles this time are the main playable characters, with Mary Jane, Venom and Haley being playable characters in their own missions. You can once again get new abilities via the three different skill trees for each character, or even both of them, and collect various suits with even additional colour styles for them too. Both characters can be swapped at any point during free roam, with even being able to play as either in some missions, but some will specifically be for each character, with their overall arc of their storyline. It even expands on the open world this time, with now adding Brooklyn and Queens to explore. While being in the air, both characters now equip web wings, which when deployed allow them to glide across the sea, with it lasting longer or being quicker when they enter wind tunnels. The gadget wheel has now been upgraded too, with new mods for web shooters, with one being able to cast a web line across pillars for additional footing during stealth missions, and another being the web grabber which pulls multiple enemies into an isolated spot for stealth takedowns. A new addition for Peter is a new web based abilities for when he is bonded with the Venom symbiote and later on the Anti Venom symbiote. This is set 10 months after the events of Spider-Man Miles Morales. Peter still serves as the mentor to Miles, but is still struggling heavy to balance his life as both Spider-Man and Peter Parker. This is also the same for Miles too. Supporting them are the Daily Bugle reporter Mary Jane Watson, who is still Peter Parker's girlfriend and is voiced by Laura Bailey. Fellow classmate to Miles Gangili, who serves as the hero's tech guru and voiced by Griffin Potter. City Councilwoman Rio Morales, who is Miles' mother and voiced by Jacqueline Pinot. Death Street artist Hayley Cooper, who is Miles' crush and is voiced by Natasha Offley. Then we have Miles' uncle Aaron Davis, who used to be the Prowler and who is voiced by Ike Amidi. Other characters we have is former mayor of Norman Osborn, who is the CEO of Oscorp and is voiced by Mark Ralston. His son Harry Osborn, who suffers from a neurological disease from his mother and is voiced by Graham Phillips. Former copy Rewanta Bay, who is now the vigilante known as Wraith and is voiced by Tara Platt. Daily Booger Chief Editor J. Jones Jameson, who is also the boss of MJ, and who is voiced by Dara D. Paul, host of the Danny Cast podcast, Danica Hart, who is voiced by Ashley Birch, Piers Aunt May, who is in a flashback and is voiced by Nancy Lindray, Miles' father, Officer Davis, who appears in a dream sequence and is voiced by Russell Richardson, Real's new boyfriend, Albert Moon, and his daughter, Cindy Moon, who appear in the last scene and have not got any credited actors, and skilled assassin slash bartender from the alternate universe, Delilah, who was originally intended to appear in Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse, but a scene was ultimately cut and for some reason I could not find the voice actor for. Both Spider-Men faced the following supervillains in the story. Alien symbiote Venom, who is capable of bonding to human bodies, which grants them powers, while negatively influencing their behaviour and is voiced by Tony Todd. Leader of the Hunters, Craven the Hunter, who seeks to hunt the superpowered beings in New York, such as the Spider-Men, and is voiced by Jim Peary. The Flame, Cletus Casti, who is head of a cult and is voiced by Chad Derrick. First boss battle for Mark, who is also known as the Sandman and is voiced by Leonardo Cano. The Lizard, who is the innocent Oscorp scientist Curse Connors, who is voiced by Mark Whitten. Master of Disguises Chimeleon, who is Craven's brother and also is voiced by Chimpiri. And Mysterio, who is a now a head developer of a VR attraction titled Mysterium and is voiced by Nosha Della. Returning villains from the previous games are Martin Lee, voiced by Stephen Oyoung, Scorpion, voiced by Jason Spisak. Tombstone voiced by Corey Jones, Black Cat voiced by Erica Lundbeck, and Otto Octavius voiced by William Sailors. Once again, like the last two videos, I'll be now going through the whole plot of this game, but since it's very long, I'll try and get it through as it as quickly as possible. Peter starts his first day as a physics teacher, with Miles being one of the students, but Fink gets interrupted by an attack by Sandman, which requires both of them to stop him. 
Peter is then fired for abandoning his class, while he then returns to Aunt May's old house in Queens, which he now has moved in with MJ. Both are surprised to see their best friend Harry outside after being recovered from his terminal illness. The Harry then hires Peter to work alongside him at his brand new company titled The Emily May Foundation, so they can heal the world together while Craven and his hunters secretly infiltrate New York. The hunters then attack a prisoner transfer which the two Spider-Men are overseeing, which results in a vengeful Miles not willing to rescue Martin Lee and is captured by the group. Peter goes on to investigate Craven and discovers his plan to hunt superpowered beings, being for a sport essentially, where he has now already killed Scorpion, Vulture, Shocker and Electro, with the next plan to capture Black Cat. Being asked by Peter, Miles then meets and helps Black Cat escape to Paris, where a new girlfriend is and needs help from the attack from other members of the Hunters. Going to reconnect, Peter, MJ and Harry go to Coney Island, where the Hunters attack once again, to this time capture a reformed tombstone. While attempting to save the ex-villain and civilians, Peter is assisted by a new superpowered Harry, who now knows about Peter's double life. Harry then reveals to him that his cure from Kurt Connors is an organic exosuit that physically augments his body. Ultimately, Tombstone was captured but is rescued by Peter along with Harry, whose powers now rapidly is evolving. However, MJ is on her own mission where she discovers that Craven is now kidnapping Connors. They attempt to save the Doctor, but the Hunters then turn him back into the Lizard. While fighting, Craven then wounds Peter, who is then saved by the exosuit which transfers itself to his body. With a new suit and enhanced powers, the hero then confronts him, where he now has a particular interest in only hunting Peter. Peter and Harry synthesize an antidote for Connors, and then through the help of Miles, Peter locates Connors and eventually cures him. Discovering that Peter is now wearing the exosuit, the Doctor explains that it's actually an alien called a Symbio, which Oscorp obtained years prior and tells him to destroy it. However, under the Symbio's influence, Peter refuses and keeps it for himself despite learning this and Harry's illness has returned, which ultimately fractures their friendship. He then goes on a rampage against the Hunters. Craven then captures Miles and forces him to fight Lee to the death, although the hero overcomes his anger and lets Lee escape. He then finds Peter and informs him about Miles' location. Peter arrives where he nearly kills Craven before Miles intervenes. After battling, Peter is convinced to remove the symbiote for good, then takes it to Oscorp to where it can be destroyed. However, a desperate Harry stops him and claims the symbiote, which this time transforms him into a monstrous creature. He then escapes into Times Square where he kills Craven and his fellow Hunters. The symbiote reveals his name to be Venom, convinces Harry to heal the world by infecting everyone with the symbiotes. He then transforms MJ into Scream, but Peter manages to free her while battling her. Both heroes then go to stop Venom, but Peter is knocked unconscious from a trace of the symbiote still being in him. Both Miles and Lee then help tame it by converting the trace into the anti-Venom symbiote, which can destroy other symbiotes as well. While this, Venom recovers their meteorite that brought him to Earth, which allows him to begin colonizing the world. The heroes then go to distract him as MJ steals the meteorite and destroys it with the Foundation's particle the accelerator, which destroys Venom's spawn. Ultimately, Peter has to destroy the symbiote and put Harry into a coma. After these events, MJ quits her job at the Daily Bugle to run her own podcast. Peter goes on a break from being Spider-Man to rebuild the company him and Harry made. Miles now takes the full on responsibility of protecting the city alone again. Norman Oscar blames the Spider-Man for ruining Harry's recovery and visits Otto Octavius in prison to demand for their secret identities. The villain refuses, taking Glee and his enemy suffering. Then, while Miles goes on to complete his college essay, he meets Rio's new boyfriend, Albert Moon, and his daughter, Sydney. Both the first games included credit scenes, which implied the use of Venom while also making Harry and Norman more prominent characters in the future titles. Brian Inter has even stated that the game had discussed including the black suit as an unlockable costume during the 2018 game, but with a meeting between art director Gavin Golden, Marvel Games Vice President Bill Roseman and senior director Eric Monachelsey, this convinced them that the symbiote would be a more significant role in the future and ultimately dropped the idea. It came to reveal in Miles Morales' game at Sony's PlayStation 5 reveal event in June 2020, Insomniac would state that the standalone title would not distract from the fact that they had much more of Peter's story to tell in future games. Both this game and the Wolverine game would jointly be announced by the company at the PlayStation Showcase event in September 2021. In time, Ryan Spiff served as the game's creative directors, 
which is the role they served on the 2018 game while Lunfall, Jetta and Todd would star as Peter, Miles and Venom. While speaking on the podcast titled This Week in Marvel, Roseman would describe the game's narrative as a little darker and it being the next big chapter. He overall linked the story's tone to The Empire Strikes Back, where he felt that the 2018's game's narrative felt tonally similar to the original Star Wars from 1977. In January 2020, Brittany Morris, who wrote the Miles Morales novel titled Wings of Fury, joined the writing team for this game. And by that June, freelance artist Davidson Caverno, who worked previously as a concept artist for various MCU films, was hired as this game's art director. In November, Scott Porter, who voiced Harry in the first game, revealed that he was recast. Uh, in the sequel to accommodate the character's more prominent role, with them wanting to go more photorealistic and felt that he had an age gap between the character as well. Phillips would later on be announced to be taking over the role at San Diego Comic Con 2023. Lonefall has said his approach to playing Peter this time is that that of an influence with Venom, citing that it's a behaviors of addiction really, where he could have two different voice performances as a character at different points of the game. He also took the approach of voicing Symbiote Spider-Man the same way he voiced Mr. Suki in Naruto, where he had a more downbeat personality and angst. When it came to making the decision to not have Eddie Brock be in the game to be the Symbiote's first host, like he is in many other iterations, Intaha has stated that this came from a desire to tell an original story that stood apart from both the comics and films, while still wanting to respect the roots of the character. He also compared it as when they first created the advanced suit for the first game. He wanted to keep classic elements to characters and stories, but also to add things that were unique to their company and universe. The game would go gold in late September 2023, a month before its release. In gameplay reveal debuted during Sony's PlayStation Showcase event in May 2023. This highlighted the mission where the Spider-Man with Peter Don in the symbiote suit, where they attempted to stop the hunters go and kidnap Connors, but he turns into the lizard and breaking into the fish market near the docks. Another form of promotion was in Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse, where you actually see Ganky playing the game in his dorm room, along with of course Peter himself appearing in a brief scene. Concept art for the game which shows the Spider-Man fighting both Craven and Venom were presented at Summer Game Fest 2023, where Intar appeared as a guest to discuss the game's story reveal the game's launch date and reveal the game's box art. The game's main theme titled Greater Together, composed by again John Passano, was previewed at the Game Awards 10-year concert in June 2023 and was then released on music streaming services shortly after. Going back to the San Diego 2023 panel, it was hosted by Intar, Roseman, Lowenfall, Jetta, Bailey and Todd at Hall H and was titled Symbiotic Relationships. It would go on to give further story and character details with a story trailer and would reveal the PlayStation bundles and accessories to go with the game's launch. The game's launch trailer was then released online on October 15th during New York Comic Con. A Titan prequel comic was released by Marvel Comics on free comic book day in May 2023. This was written by the first game's writer Christoph Cage and illustrated by IG Gura. This takes place after the Miles Morales game where it showcases the struggle of Peter, Miles and MJ as they go through and balance their individual responsibilities and their duties to New York. It also has the Hood as the main antagonist, who has attempted to gain ancient tablet inscripted with magic tombs to resurrect his dying mother. The game's directed director and co-writer John Paquet elaborated on introducing this villain in a comic, stating that they were interested in exploring the idea of the two Spider-Men front and fret with powers beyond their own understanding. on October 20th, 2023, with a new Game Plus update coming on March 7th of this year. There was a digital exclusive edition of the game. It featured two sets of five unique suits for both the main characters. These were designed by guest stars from PlayStation Studios and the wider entertainment industry. It also includes additional frames and stickers for the photo mode, along with two extra skill points for the skill tree. A collector's edition was distributed through retailers and PlayStation Direct included a downloadable voucher for the digital deluxe version, a steelbook case and a 19 inch display statue where the Spider-Man are fighting Venom. All pre-orders including the standard edition came with early unlock bonuses, such as the Arknight suit for Peter and the Shadow Spider suit for Miles, along with the web grabber gadget and three additional skill points. Sony also released a special edition PlayStation console bundle themed after the game on September 1st. Is overall a variant of the standard console, sport custom faceplates, and a unique DualSense controller, 
based on the imagery of Venom wrapping itself around Peter's red suit and the white emblem. It also comes with a digital voucher for the game's a standard edition. If you already had the console, you can also purchase separate of the faceplates or the controller as well. This game overall had mostly great reviews from critics, with receiving the ratings from the following companies. A 90 out of 100 from Metacritic, a 98% from Open Critic, a 9 out of 10 from Destructoid, a 4.5 from Digital Trends, a 9 out of 10 from Easy Allies, a 4 out of 5 from Eurogamer, a 9.5 out of 10 from Game Informer, a 8 out of 10 from GameSpot, a 5 out of 5 from Games Radar Plus, a 4.5 out of 5 from Hardcore Gamer, a 8 out of 10 from IGN, a 4 out of 5 from PC Mag, a 8 out of 10 from Push Square, a 10 out of 10 from Shack News, a 5 out of 5 from The Guardian, a 5 out of 5 from Video Games Chronicle, a 5 out of 5 from VG247, and a 10 out of 10 from videogamer.com. Game sold 2.5 million units in its first 24 hours of release, making it the fastest selling PlayStation Studios game and over 500 million units were sold in 11 days. Over in the UK, it was the best selling retail game during its week of release, becoming the fourth biggest physical launch of this year. So far, this game has been nominated for 32 awards, with three honorable mentions and one win so far, which overall credits for its music. September 2023, shortly before the game's release, Night for director Ben Affleman addressed the possibility for future games. In the next month during its release, Paquette and Insomniac had discussed the possibility of a spin-off game involving Venom. Well, Intar had said a third game would quote-unquote be pretty epic, where he would go on to compare the games to the MCU, saying that the first two were like Iron Man from 2008, but Spider-Man 2 was like it's Captain America Civil War. He also was questioned about how these games would connect with the studio's upcoming game Wolverine where they would confirm that they are set in the same universe. While this, he would say that he would prefer for the team that were working on that game would still make it stand on its own, but would like the possibility of crossing over the characters together in a future title, which is being discussed in early development. A detail for the game that was also asked from him was the previous easter egg of Nelson and Murdoch's building, this time being removed and evacuated. He would then say to be stay tuned, though the easter egg has been added once again in a patch update. In November, Affman and Morris confirmed that Miles would now be considered as the main Spider-Man in future entries to the franchise. Then, of course, in December 2023, Insomniac was a victim to a ransom attack by a group known as Residia, who published 1.6 terabytes of employee data, development assets and pre-production slaves internally used. Mainly, this did leak more about the Wolverine game, where there was a full playable PC port built as well. Though, there was also documents a robot to publish online from the hack. This essentially gave us info of what was planned for the future of the Marvel video games. This included free DLC storylines for Spider-Man 2 like its previous game, which also would be free to access. These were titled Beetle Infection with of course Beetle being the main villain, Extreme Carnage with Cletus returning as Carnage, and Spider-Verse Anomaly which would be a crossover with Sony Pictures for the Spider-Verse films, which would include missions, NPCs and villains based on the films with even a visual filler inspired by the films as well. Then we would have a standalone Venom game titled Venom Lethal Protector for 2025, before Wolverine's release in 2026, Spider-Man 3 for 2028, and an X-Men game for 2030. Though any of these games could or have been cancelled before even properly being announced, with even a multiplayer Spider-Man game being leaked but already been confirmed to being cancelled before the leak occurred. <laughs> Game series releases a new title, especially something that is specifically titled Something Number, there is an expectation for something drastically new to be added. This game doesn't really do that. There are of course new things to do around the map and changes to formula here or there, but this gameplay is way too much like the same previous two titles. That is fine in my own opinion, this allows them to refine its core mechanics, giving us more what we loved about the previous titles. And of course, now letting us have the option to choose in which Spider-Man we could play as. I like how they individually show, though, how these characters are different as well. Of course, with them having their own storylines going on to have different costume choices, but also to have two new skill trees which showcase their own powers. If you want to have electrical powers, go ahead and choose Miles. However, if you want to have a bit more power of the symbiotes, you could also choose Peter later on in the story, 
with even the addition of him using these iron arms earlier on in the game as well. Going on to the main two villains briefly, I do overall enjoy Kraven's spot on adaptation. I like the admittedly predictable but alright portrayal of Harry becoming Venom, but the final acts of this game don't fully come together. It is of course way better storytelling than something such as Spider-Man 3 or The Amazing Spider-Man 2, but there are a lot of great moments or story beats that are just frustrating or rushed overall. Peter's time with the symbiote himself feels great, don't get me wrong, but it also feels very quick, where in canon he only went on this very important storyline, not just in the comics, but to also this story in what, a few days? I also feel Miles does get pushed aside a fair amount too. Of course, we've seen this type of arc done before in other Spider-Man stories, and with his own previous game, but I feel the simple balance of him being a regular civilian and being someone like Spider-Man always is the most crucial part of this character's story. And with Pierre now not needing to hide his powers all the time, with of course having everyone close around him know his secret identity, where the only effects he now really has is keeping a job, which you could say is the same for Miles, but not exactly, because everyone doesn't know his secret identity, with of course, with him also needing to write his essay, which entirely will determine his future, not just if they even see if he can even handle it. However, these moments only have a few times in this plot, and even then feel very quickly ended at the end of the game, where it's only just okay really, and having Harry as Agent Venom for a while also kind of pushed Miles back as well, to just get on with his own side missions. But if you're someone who just plays a main game in a game without doing anything else including side missions, Miles doesn't really feel that important, but is meant to be the future primary Spider-Man? I like that they didn't recycle everything for this one too. You don't need to reveal the map through towers, or you don't need to stop a certain amount of crimes through our walls, but it's still there if you wish to do it. Of course though, these do have permanent replacements, with now needing to find Spider-Bot to reveal the Spider-Verse cutscene, take photos of locations to send to Robbie Robertson about a potential job, though I would say that these feel quite more natural, while being altered to more appear while you're swinging around the map, like the crimes for example. I also think that a better choice to do as well was having fast traveling now feel much more natural to swing in as well, being more in the moment rather than having the subway cutscenes too. Though it was fun in the previous games, it works a lot more now. I also felt the side missions of unpowered characters were a lot better this time by being a crucial part of the story and having their own interesting gameplay mechanics in there. Another problem is a basic thing as New Game Plus not being there until around, what, five to six months after release, which is something being in the previous two games for even it being in launch on Miles Morales. I still love this game, but there is a very unavoidable issues, so I have to ultimately give it a 4 out of 5 or 8 out of 10. So guys, that was me going through Marvel Spider-Man 2, and this has been a very enjoyable series because these are video games I very much love because Though this one did have problems, it is very much a great adaptation of such a character that is my favourite character and I have loved for most of my life. And yeah, this game's kind of disappointing, but again, very fun to play. I think I might replay it when New Game Plus finally gets introduced because this new additional costume is going to be added to that as well. And uh, yeah, I haven't really got anything else to say. Um, if you want to give your own thoughts, please comment down below with any additional facts about the making of the game, if you have any as well, or just anything I missed out really. Please like the video if you did like, and please consider subscribing if you did watch the series and enjoyed it. Like, comment, subscribing ain't the main thing to me. I just overall like making videos and discussing things that I'm interested in. So yeah, um, I'll see you whatever I cover next, but I will admit, I might be a bit busy with two short films and make on the horizon. But anyways, I'll try and see you guys as soon as possible.